these different traditions and the beauty of the, of the, the cultural heritage of the Middle East that I, think, I feel is so often forgotten and overshadowed by war. In, in, and when we think of the Middle East, we think terrorism, we think bombs, we think destruction, we think chaos, you know. And there's so much more to it than that. I cannot write about Damascus without the jasmine climbing my fingers. I cannot say her name without my mouth getting overcrowded with apricots, drink and blackberries and quince. I cannot remember her without a thousand doves on the walls of my memories and another thousand doves take off and fly. I first visited the Middle East when I was 18 and I went to Iran with my dad and I was just blown away by the beauty of Islamic art there really, um, the mosques of Isfahan Shiraz, the colours and the beauty of, of the design, I just I thought they were the most beautiful buildings I'd ever seen. So I lived in Amman for a year and I just had an amazing opportunity to work for UNHCR and and they asked if I'd organise art projects to be exhibited um, in, a, in, a, in an exhibition for World Refugee Day in 2014 in Jordan. And I was just overwhelmed by the, the opportunity because I just thought, goodness, I had n no idea that when I sent my CV that I would have such an opportunity. I expected it should just be an internship or something. And I just had no experience of running a large-scale art project. All I'd ever done was paint in my bedroom at home or in, you know, at school in the art room. Um, so it was actually really quite scary like having the language. Just and how just I was so struck by how that just broke down cultural barriers. Just that we were all there, all covered in paint. You know, just um, ever all the kids running around coming up to me, going "Bitty loan, bitty loan," which is like give me colour, and it's just chaos at times. We were just covered in paint. I was running around everywhere and we were all collaborating it together. Mm. And something about having the language coming there and also art is something so unifying. It was mm. such a collaborative, large-scale project. It was so unique. Some of it must have been a kind of tough as well. I think one of them was themed, you know, home as well and being reminded of, rather than an escape from their lives, also addressing it head on. Do you think it was difficult or empowering or I think particularly the first attempt was it I asked them to think about their experiences of war so they kind of they drawn on pieces of paper their memories and some of them were just kind of um, houses bombed you know bodies floating in the water just dead bodies tanks soldiers airplanes dropping bombs and you just think goodness I can't even imagine what it's like that these what these kids have been through I can't even imagine what they've seen and just the traumas that they're living with day-to-day -day life. And <clears throat> a sense that, I don't know whether, because there were only a short amount of time, three-day art projects, whether reopening those wounds and re-triggering that trauma by painting as well as also... I think there was also a sense that I was able to tell the kids that these, are gonna be, these tents are going to be part of an exhibition, you know, and it's going to be in, in Jordan and, and then travel around Europe. And the sense of giving them that sense of importance that mm. people want to hear their message, and that they and people care that all that they've been through in Syria and they and seeing the, their paintings, it's a powerful message of what they've been through, and that it will, and that people want to know that people care enough to see that, and, it, mm. and that other lots of people will see that and will it will impact them. So it's a sense that their message is going out to the world and mm. that they are being heard, that they're important. I think that's. 
the main kind of benefit of the tents because they have travelled so far, I think. And some of them yeah. were fun as well. You had yeah, one, was it yeah. Hope that was the, the thing? Hope tent, yeah. yeah, that was that was chaos the first day because they weren't <laughs> expecting me to have come there. Like, it was, you know, and then just, they were, the kids were so young, they were about five, and so they just, they, we were painting the background of the tent, so yellow and, and green, and just painted one another, painted me, you know, there was so much <laughs> paint on the paint on the tent that we were all sliding around and put all over the place you know um <laughs> and just had to be like halas you know which means enough and had to send them all home because it was just chaos Going to Calais, I couldn't believe that this was Europe. It was just the worst thing I've ever been. And I was stunned by the squalor and just tents everywhere, just battered and 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 um, they'd only just put in run some running water and that was freezing cold, and just the bitterness of the wind. I was cold, and we were in a, in a hut, and we had a little stove going, giving people cups of tea. And as they were waiting to see the doctors, who'd all volunteered to come, their time to come there. And it was just, I haven't, I've never seen anything like it. It was just bitterly cold. It was, I, I came back and I, I, I was just, I had the neck that I just was so, felt so just distressed and depressed, but this was, Europe, we could call ourselves civilized Europe, and we treat these humans as as if they're animals, that they're living like animals, particularly the tear gas attacks that they get from the police and the rubber bullets and the day-to-day -day humiliation that they go through and, att and attacks from the far right as well. I just I just was so struck by the dehumanization of where then there's no dignity there, whereas in the camps in Jordan, in the refugees' life in Jordan, it, it's hard, it's very hard, but it's, there is an organisation there and there's, they do have schools and education and set-ups in some of the camps, you know, and there is some form of dignity of, of human life. But I, in Calais, I just felt that there was none. I think when I, my first interest in portraits, so that began when I was in Africa and I was really just mesmerised by the beauty of the women I met in the, particularly the women in the, in the villages, just remote villages in Africa. I kind of channeled it into painting a portrait of a Mozambican woman I've met and her portraits now have been exhibited in Durham Castle and Durham Cathedral and I just, I think there's something really beautiful about that, that she's just a, a woman from a remote village in Mozambique that's really impoverished but her radiance and her joy that she exudes is something that captivates everyone. And whenever everyone's, ever, ever anyone sees her image, they're always captivated by it. And I, th I just wish she could know. I just yeah. wish there was some way she could know. The thing is about Portia, normally it's for the elite, for the celebrities. And most, port if you go into galleries, they're mostly kind of white Western audiences. But to actually turn it on its head and to be painting women in remote villages in Africa or refugees in refugee camps like met in Jordan or Calais is to kind of celebrate the disability of human nature as well in the sense that all of us, we're all equal no matter what race, whatever background, whatever social strata we're from. We are the same innately within us no matter our cultural differences. We have struggles, hopes, dreams, desires, you know, like anyone, all of us across the world. really feel that my life has been enriched beyond what, beyond what I can describe by the people I've met, both in refugee camps in the Middle East or African villages, the different cultures, you know, the vibrancy of the Middle Eastern life in Africa has influenced my art beyond what I can describe the vibrancy of the colours I use has all been inspired really by the Middle East, by Africa, by the people I meet there and the vibrancy of the culture. And, and just the love as well from the 
as a result of doing the art projects from the children, like the recent ones in the art in the in Zachary and Azarek refugee camps this last April. I was so struck by the love that the girls, particularly the girls, came up to me. All of them wanted to give me hugs at the end of the day. All of them wanted to kiss me a hundred times, you know, as, and, and scrubbing my hands and feet to get all the paint off, you know, and laughing to get it off my face, you know. And, and just that real sense of, just real sense of unity with them and real sense of, yeah, just, just their, their love. And I, I felt that I was blessed beyond what I'd, I could give them. I felt that... I'd I'd receive more, you know, than what i what they'd given me. I really I really believe that you know you're never made poor by giving and I really think that there's a real danger is in that fear of the other, a fear of people who are different. So we miss out on cultures, on people that we could that enrich our lives, that will transform us but and challenge us, of course, and challenge our prejudices and thoughts. I mean, I've got prejudice just like anyone else, but it's so good for them to be challenged, you know, and for my understanding to be changed of different people and different cultures because it broadens my mind, it broadens my heart, and, and I really think my art wouldn't be as it was today if it wasn't for all these people that I've met and places I've been. There's a real danger, I really believe, as we close down the borders of our hearts, we impoverish ourselves and we restrict and limit our lives.